Okay, hello. Ooh, do you hear some drums back there? This is my part two video on Hobbin. Hopefully you've already watched part one. Should I dance on beat? Okay, I actually came out here to re-record part two because I actually thought my last version was a little boring, but I realized that my last version might only be boring because I'm reading off the paper, which kind of sucks, but I'm just not very good at reading. So anyway, I've come to accept that I should just leave part two as it is because I don't know how to make it any more entertaining even if I'm outside. So. This will be a great time to fold some laundry. Hmm, maybe drink a cup of coffee. Uh, 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 yeah, or you know, just like um, do anything else around the house that you need. Uh, I'm basically saying don't watch, but maybe just listen. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to keep your attention, but if I can't, um, I will not be offended. And that is totally delicious and up to you. So I'm gonna go now. I hope you can hear these drums or else I just look like a crazy person <laughs> who's shimmying. But anyway, here's part two. Wah -wah. But before I begin, I do want to say that I always welcome critique and correction on anything I say or write when I share my takeaways about identities that are not my own. I'm never under the impression that I'm right, nor is being right my goal. I'm always learning and therefore I'm happy to receive necessary corrections if slash when needed. Okay. Ugh, gross. Okay. Uh, so the thing, oh my goodness. Should I keep going? I'm going to keep going. Okay. So the thing I'd like to highlight from Hobbin's book is that the motivation is not about helping those with a disability. It is about the recognition of the importance of personal autonomy, which cannot exist without one's access needs being appropriately met. The importance of autonomy is also something to consider when we focus on stories of the disabled community. Rather than listening to narratives about the disabled community from someone outside of it, it is important to listen to voices from the community itself. This includes me. I'm not a part of this community, and therefore if I cross any line within my writing here, don't listen to me and instead go directly to the resources that I am lifting up. Um, for example, Hobbit. But in hopes of connecting with friends on here who I know are mostly hearing and sighted, I believe if we have been privileged with access to most all information, we would benefit to reflect on why we feel we may deserve this access while others don't. And the answer, in my opinion, is that we don't actually deserve access, but we may likely feel entitled to it simply because we've always had it. And we may then likely defensively suggest that it's just the way it is. However, it's long past time to challenge that that's the way it is or has been mentalities because that school of thought has been complicit with leaving the needs of many behind for centuries, literally, and it's harmful, if not to you personally, then to others. Our society was not properly um, set up for those who are deaf, blind, or deaf blind. These communities encounter many barriers to gain access to information that sighted and hearing people consume without second thought. And pointing this out should not be controversial, controversial or be met with defensiveness because it is simply a fact. However, if you yourself do not currently prioritize access to those with a disability, either online or offline in your place of business, my goal is not to make you feel defensive or guilty, but it is to lift up Hobbin's work and have you reflect on ways to move forward with necessary inclusion and access in mind. There is no need to be defensive when pointing out our unacknowledged privilege because it is usually just that, unacknowledged. And most times it's um, from a lack of awareness, which may also not be a personal failing, but often a societal one. I myself was not introduced to Hobbin's work until I was in college, and that is only because I was taking a deaf culture class. This tells me that only if you are attending college and only if you are electively taking a specific class on a specific identity that our education system is not adequately designed to make you aware of the identities that are typically most overlooked. And redundantly, they are most likely overlooked precisely because they are made into elective courses rather than required education. So how do we move forward as a society when we aren't explicitly taught or made aware of stories from the disabled community and are only introduced to these stories most often by chance encounters, like perhaps this post? Um, we can make our personal goal to seek out the information from the disabled community and to learn from them about ableism that runs throughout our society and then challenge the ableist thoughts within ourselves as our ideals are often shaped by society until we intentionally confront them and challenge them personally. Then we can start thinking of ways to provide access in the small ways available to us. And it does absolutely make a difference. For example, prioritizing access online in online spaces can make you aware to the access needs offline as well, 
when your mind is focused on access needs in one area, you likely become attuned to other areas in which it is not being adequately provided. And just in case anyone wants to roll their eyes at that, please refrain from trivializing small efforts like adding image descriptions or closed captions on social media. Instagram is a huge platform where a majority of users spend time on it daily, either to connect with friends or find brands and services. So imagine the frustration of not being able to access this platform if you did not have the necessary access accommodations. As a social experiment, I challenge you to scroll through Instagram today and click mute on any video without captions and try and figure out what's being said. <laughs> Additionally, if you're next to a friend or a significant other, um, have them close your eyes, close your eyes, and then have them open Instagram for you and start reading people's captions out loud. And if they don't have image descriptions within the caption, see if you can understand what the image is about. And then maybe you can even have your friend read the comment section for you out loud to see if you can piece together what the image may be with context clues from the comments. But I guess the sad thing is that people shouldn't be isolated or have to try and use context clues to gain access to things that we regularly consume as a hearing or sighted community. Um, this is not about feeling like you need to implement access online, but it is pointing out that if you believe that everyone deserves autonomy and access, then you should want to do this. However, no one is going to make you, nor is anybody forcibly requiring you to do so, unless you are a business and refuse to provide access when asked by somebody who requires it because that is likely in violation with the ADA, Americans with Disability Act. But for personal platforms, for individuals, it is simply a choice. <clears throat> And for those who say things like, well, I don't know anybody who's deaf, blind, or deaf, blind. This may be true, but it doesn't... Oh, I just got a text message, sorry. This may be true, but it doesn't omit that it is necessary to educate yourself about ableism and disability justice. This point would be just as ridiculous as someone saying, well, I don't have a friend of color as a way to absolve them from learning about racism. And choosing to not include access just because you don't yet personally know someone with one of these disabilities actually keeps you from likely meeting someone from these communities because you, yourself, are creating a barrier by not including access. So it's a cycle that only you really have the ability to change. I wrote a bit of a tone shift. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Admittedly, I find it disheartening that some of the voices who speak loudly about liberation also tend to justify leaving the needs of those who are disabled out of their work as if disability justice needs to have its own separate space. Perhaps I'm not the one who should be attempting to point this out because I too still am learning, but I do find it disappointing when someone who speaks about intersectionality then focuses in on singular levels of oppression, but then also tends to feel frustrated and shocked when people can justify leaving them or the groups that they're advocating for behind. However, how can someone in this position be genuinely shocked when they too justify exclusion to those who are disabled? I really love these two quotes from Mary Fashik, I think I'm pronouncing that right, who is the founder and runs the account uh, at Upgrade Accessibility. Non-disabled leaders who are working toward collective liberation should be looking to disabled leaders that are doing the same work. And another quote, um, collective, liber collective liberation is not truly collective without the inclusion of disabled slash chronically ill individuals. I believe, I believe, I do, okay. I believe that the goal is never to try and figure out which marginalized group has it worse, but instead to identify that injustice of any kind for any group is not acceptable, um, especially in a society where we have access to so much knowledge and we absolutely have the ability to address and make necessary changes to address our flawed society and the barriers it creates for marginalized communities or more astutely communities who have been made marginalized due to these societal barriers. I also don't think that we need individual leaders or heroes to create these changes. We need community effort to agree upon the fact that if we truly did our part on an individual level with community in mind, we could absolutely shape a better future together. I also think it's very important to question and critique figures who we place on a pedestal or that we identify as leaders 
because these individuals are also a part of our society that was not explicitly taught about disability. And therefore, they are also some of the very people who miss the mark as well with providing necessary access. Your favorite news stations, celebrities, or activists are also some of the very people who are not prioritizing access themselves, perhaps because they are unaware of the need. And I'm not pointing this out to blame anyone, but rather to acknowledge that you do not need popular influential figures to give you the green light to prioritize access yourself and realize that it's important. You can additionally kindly inform these platforms or figures of who they are leaving behind when they don't incorporate access themselves. I say kindly, or at least that would be my method of choice, because I personally understand why so many would be unaware in our current society, and you can absolutely point this out without becoming antagonistic or assuming that they didn't provide access due to malicious intent, but likely due to an unawareness or a lack of education on the topic of disability. Lastly, I always mentally prepare my, my I always mentally prepare myself for defensiveness and conflict. Perhaps it's unnecessary, but just in case. Um, as a note to anyone who may be irritated um, by my pointing out inequality or injustice because you'd rather focus on peace or getting along, this response is rooted in toxic positivity and one that does not allow for proper critique of our unjust society. It is also a typical response from those who already reap the benefits of a privileged identity. But peace is nearly an illusion, as is equality if our, in our current society. And until every single person investigates their unearned privileges and challenges the society that benefits some identities while it disadvantages others, complaints and uprisings will always be around the corner, and rightfully so. Not until everyone's basic human needs are met will we live in a world that can then perhaps focus on peace. Um, I feel when people speak of injustice, it can come off a little like us against them mentality. So in this example, talking about access, it would be people who provide access against people who don't. But I'd rather reframe that uh, us against them mentality as myself against myself mentality because um, it is my... It is either my personal choice to include access or to not provide access. And because I only have power over my individual choice, I cannot make choices for others, only call attention to things that I believe are the most inclusive and welcoming choices. So to be clear, I'm not against anyone who doesn't prioritize access themselves. I'm simply encouraging us all to consider why we don't already provide access and if we would be willing to see why it's important, it's an important step for equitable futures. <clears throat> if we do not take the initiative to examine injustice and by extension unearned personal privileges, then we cannot do our part to swing the pendulum toward a more just society. And if we do not take concern with learning about the barriers that some face, we keep some of the barriers in place simply by doing nothing at all. We are each a part of a society recreated by the choices we make or don't make, meaning that we each have value and importance um, when trying to transform it. And maybe one day we won't have to have long discussions on inclusion because we will all be a part of a society that is actually designed for everyone in mind and where inclusion is the precedent, not the exception. Long story short, I do not like participating in spaces where not everyone is welcome. And because of that, I do not really like posting on Instagram anymore. But specifically, I don't like um, reposting things on Instagram stories as some screen readers which is something used by the blind, um, cannot access this feature. But if I do end up posting something on an Instagram story, I specifically don't repost anything that does not include full accessibility in the original post itself. <clears throat> and I can't help but think that if more people adopt this way of thinking, we could reach online accessibility results faster. The app creators of Instagram would likely be more proactive in making this feature accessible, uh, and other features that are perhaps not accessible at the moment, and brands that don't include accessibility would likely lose their engagement and be quicker to make necessary changes to maintain their following. I do tend to operate in extremes, so people can think that I'm being too much or too sensitive, and that's okay. Um, but I also think if more people decided to care, 
and also stop sharing things unless they were made accessible to everyone, we would begin to attune ourselves to the necessary changes that need to be made online and offline to operate in a more accessible society. <clears throat> okay. That was long. That was very long. I'm very sorry. If you made it to the end of this, thank you uh, so much again. And in part three, I'm going to discuss ways that I've been implementing access online and hopefully my methods will make it easier on you if you begin to do so as well. And I'm going to lift up some Instagram accounts that I have learned so much from while creating accessible content. And part three is under my IGTV tab somewhere. I don't really know. I'm gonna stop the video. <laughs> I do want to mention one more thing that I listed deafness under the umbrella term disability in this video, but I do think it's important to call attention to the fact that not everybody who is deaf describes themselves as disabled. So some do and others do not. So it's always best not to assume you would know how somebody likes to be identified. I think this topic is like a little too big for me to even have much commentary on but I do just want to call attention to this and there is a couple YouTube videos that I would recommend watching and I will we'll list them here and that's all I want to say this is the longest video in this little series that I've made and um it is done now you made it to the end thank you so much if you're still watching <laughs>